Maybe I stole your pen. I'll Are bring you it back. Now? Okay. I'd like to call <laughs> to order the uh, July 13 meeting of the Isle of Palms Planning Commission and acknowledge that press and the public were duly notified in accordance with state law. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Uh, do we have any motions relative to that? Move to approve as submitted. Got a motion. Second. And a second. Second. Any uh, conversation? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Moving on. Old business, the transportation element of the comprehensive plan. Might we finally be putting that to bed? We're no. getting started. <laughs> getting started, getting getting started with the first draft and discussion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're getting started. So there's a whole lot of stuff in there, Douglas. Do you want to? So, yes. Um, and I looked at the last, the last time this group made changes to the conference of plan update was a year ago. Wow. Which is kind of shocking to me. Yeah. We, we, we basically started, uh, talking about transportation a year ago, and then we got sidetracked with short-term rentals and, um, things started happening with the Isle of Palms connector study. So it's been kind of on ice for now a year, which was, I thought would have sworn it was six months, but it's a year. Um, so we're, we're the next um, element of the comprehensive plan, as you all will recall, planning commission was kind of going through each of the seven, eight elements sequentially. Uh, and the next one to be reviewed was transportation. Um, we looked at the old plan and acknowledged that it was very light uh, and and quite frankly just dated on the the matters uh, included there. So the decision was made to get a little bit of outside help from uh, Stantec, who we worked with, and they provided a series of recommendations of things that you that the city may want to consider. Um, at that meeting, at those workshops, the planning commission adopted or or decided to include three. I think it was three of those uh, considerations in the strategies section of the plan. So what was in the packet and distributed is a new draft. It's kind of a starting point. Wanted to get y'all's feedback and just see what what we wanted to add, where we wanted to go from here. Um, and to kind of go through at a high level what those changes are, we updated the traffic counts graph. We left a lot of the introduction the same as it was. Um, we got into in a little bit of detail, not not detail, but a mention of um, the city's beach management plan that was approved in 2015. That is the plan where um, the city basically uh, allows beach parking on avenues and streets very close to the beach and then creates residential parking districts on those sections in the back of the island. So that's the first red line paragraph um, in your packet. The uh, next paragraph talks about the 2022 um, effort where the city has entered into an agreement with the DOT uh, to study the Isle of Palms connector, specifically the striping on the connector and the arrangement of the connector. That's one study. There's a second study that would also be done that will study that entire corridor uh, from Highway 17 into the commercial district. So that's the second paragraph uh, that's new. And then it talks in the third paragraph that's new about the workshop that we had with Stantec. I have, um, in this draft, I've included their slides just kind of as a point of interest. Maybe, maybe too interesting, gauging by the, by the people that showed up. And John, for your benefit, hope you're doing well. We just saw some of your neighbors. They were slightly ahead of you. Uh, and that's the 
what was in the packet was a was I understand. Just saying, here's something things to look right. at mm -hmm. the planning commission um, yeah so it is. And, yeah. and at that meeting the That's planning that commission <laughs> identified the three i think it was there was three it was like it was yeah, three everything. that they wanted included in the strategies section of the comprehensive plan and those three strategies are in there as as things for the city to consider but the loop into your neighborhood was dead on arrival <laughs> as was the the gondola rides were yeah. dead on yeah. arrival um we just thought it'd be nice to include all of that in there so yeah. people can look at the options that we yeah. looked at well, thanks for appreciating Yeah. Well, oh. but you're welcome to stay. Yeah, I know. Through all. All right. Good to see That's you. That's what thanks for That's exactly what <laughs> See ya. So, so, Douglas, quick question. The transportation counts that were updated? Yes. Just that doesn't include anything that comes over from the um, Hunley Bridge by Breach, right? That's correct. Yeah, there. Um, that is specifically the um, connector, the the counter, the SCDOT counter on the connector, and and I I'm saying a counter, but I think we learned that it's it's something other than that. Is it a stripe or is it a? It's extrapolated through the cameras. The yeah. cameras. That's what it is. Yeah, it's not a. It's no longer a traffic counter. So what they had. They have. I think they have. Um, some by breach inlet but but i don't think you could get exact kind of full on full off if i'm remembering correctly so how do we capture that data how do we uh -huh. how did we how do we i mean full on a, full off well there's this you know there you get a significant portion that comes from that way as well yeah so i, I mean our, i guess our traffic counts are probably underestimated given the fact you don't know that <clears throat> I, I don't know. Well, that. yes, we're not getting, I don't think we're getting full on and full off. Are you getting walkers and bicyclists also? No. It's a good question though, Suzanne. I'll, I'll definitely ask um, Stantec if that's possible to get. I, I think as I understand it, the counters on the breach inlet side are either before and after an alternate road and they they could have turned before they got to the connection. so there's Some... a camera over there by the park that points toward you know yeah us all the pumps and when i say the park it's the one on sullivan's and i noticed on our side and this may be on private property there's a couple of cameras that point the other way i don't know if that was um intended for the boathouse's that... purpose or yeah, what but they're on a Big pole. I don't know. He had the police. For like drownings. For drownings. So that it goes right But down. not I don't think it's tied to, I don't think it's tied to the traffic count. But I can verify that if you if you all think that this would be uh, I think it would give us a better picture. I don't know what you guys think. If it's available. Yeah, I know when we got into the dis kind of the discussion and looked at even with Santec here, there was questions about how much traffic is breach inlet, how much goes down twenty first, how much mm -hmm. is going in wild dings. Um so yeah, we don't know where it's going at other than what comes across the connector. I guess if we're gonna have a traffic jam, it's gonna be at this intersection. I've seen both. I have seen both. Because they all the way down so yes. Well, I yes. Well that, <clears throat> that's kind of covered in 8.3 goal, which is completely accuracy of our data. So if we <laughs> even add hardware, we have to. So we did, you know, historically we had, and, and Chief Buchanan, the prior chief, was very techy, very into um, gadgets and things. Um, and he did, we installed embedded um, counters on, on every lane. And so he could tell how many were turning right, how many were turning left, who, who were going straight. Um, but they were, they were 
always broken, always problematic. Um, and then the DOT started, they kind of improved what they were providing. Um, and, and you will, will recall when they were, when Stantec was here, they kind of went through their dashboard and, and the data that you can get from their accounts. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was pretty impressive. I mean, it was much better, much more user-friendly than what the chief was getting was, you know, kind of raw clicks of a, mm -hmm. of a counter. Um, but if we, I mean, certainly could be um, be improved if we if we felt like it should be and would be useful. I only see one camera on Isle of Homes at the intersection here. There should be two. There should be one that points from. Are you looking at the counts, uh, Sandy? Are you looking at the the ones five that... one one? So yeah, so this is a different. Um, there's one that faces toward Harris Teeter. Yeah, and then there's, there's two at that one intersection now. SCDOT traffic counts. Mm -hmm. If you Google that, it'll take you to the to a map that has their various counters, counter locations. So one of the things on this graph, which I guess I don't know, you can kind of assuming without the data. All the uh, the last three four years, it's been pretty solid. Which so I don't think it reflects like over time from you know two thousand say eight to now how the numbers have increased or if they've increased, um, which I thought would be kind of interesting to have in the comprehensive plan. But well, we we actually took out. I mean, the the current approved plan has yes. old data. I think it's and I was different. thinking, I guess you could go back to the old plan, look it up and see yeah. that, which is, which I didn't do before I got here. Um, I think it was a different location. Yeah. I mean, I think it was counting a different, I think it goes back to Chief Buchanan's old embedded, um, but we could certainly look at that too. If we could, how far back? Yeah, that's the problem is it wouldn't be necessarily comparable because it may right. not be from the same location. Right. Okay, so there are three cameras, and the third one being up on rifle range, and two um, here. Rifle range works. Cam <laughs> are you looking at cameras or, or locations that they're getting counts? Cameras. Oh, that's Which what, are the what most they get the count from right now. I don't know what they're, they're uh, don't they have a, then they put a traffic counter up over on Mount Pleasant side of the connector? Yes. The, the little surgical Sorry, tubes yeah. there are the two in, on the other that's the camera but i think here. somewhere over here right up here is where the counter is uh yeah yeah but i think that's just that's new not the camera so, the counter yeah. um, so well, david that. i'll i'll just i will see how far back that, that was just a question uh, and, and wouldn't if we can have on. an old line in there instead of just going to 19 have an 08 or some historical perspective of what it is again it, it you know you can always, we can always go back to the old plan i just thought yeah. yeah it was kind of interesting like when we saw that it really doesn't show like it's had any really changed in the yeah. last four years i mean obviously other the, than the, the covid drop right. is the only kind of point of interest in that graph i guess is yeah they're very consistently stacked There's two on on, two on this um, intersection. Yeah. And one on my cameras. Correct. Yeah. Are you, you're, and you're, not looking at, you're not looking at a map that has the locations where they can provide no, the no. data counts. They're looking at the cameras. Cameras. Yeah. Yeah. The Stantec gave us oh, go to good. South Carolina Sorry. DOT it's website. Yeah, you somewhere like, there. You that's yeah. the that shows where you can get counts for mm -hmm. where they're collecting counts, which is what this graph is taken from so i always hesitate to put too many years you know you put you you we include i put in here i say i i hesitate to do it then i point to where i immediately did it in 2015 um so i'm referencing something that already happened seven years ago this plan is supposed to kind of have a useful life of five years um so it's 12 years old when we're looking at it again 
I put that date in there because that plan has kind of come under attack by some to mm -hmm. some degree um, from the DOT. It's been challenged, you know, the public the beach going public has kind of ch challenged that plan. So to me, that's a kind of a important milestone. But that's again, you, you all think that's okay to leave in You're there? You're talking about the June. June, June of 2015, 2015 yeah. that they approved yeah. that beach management, that beach plan. And that kind of shapes. I, I, I would say when I looked at it, I questioned the, the use of the word approved. I think it was endorsed, which has a different connotation. I think I think um, the secretary used the word approved. I couldn't remember it. I was trying to find it. I couldn't find the plan. I did. They said it complied with Title Fifty Seven, which is the traffic laws, but they ignore all other laws and said it was up to the city to make that determination. So it wasn't like I, again. I don't know how that all works out and who approves what in the state level, but. When so, all this came up, I just thought it was kind of interesting the wording that they used in the actual and they letter. they actually I mean they used term I think they used the terms applaud I mean they yeah. applauded our effort they they used very positive uh, terms yeah they used very positive terms I I know that they had to approve the plan before we would actually install the signs right. Um, they did approve our plan and we got an encroachment permit. So, so they did give us technically an approval. Okay. In their letters, they, they used very positive terms of being, you know, proactive. They applauded the effort. It was a creative solution. I mean, all those terms kind of came out. Didn't really want to put that, you know, kind of <laughs> right. back in there. Didn't want to make a right. um, kind of contentious position uh, during the debates two years ago didn't they reaffirm the plan so to speak there was one during all the controversy then the secretary kind of said yes well the secretary threatened to but, but then ultimately there was i thought there was a letter generated that said after we redid some of the park and they said that the, the plan stands yeah well so that is what the angle parking that's kind that's of how the angle park came right. to be is oh. We're not so sure about your plan. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. yeah. And ultimately, yeah, they did. After we did the angle parking, they said, okay, we now have no issue. But prior to the angle parking, oh, they yeah, were no, they talking about the full all thing. Full, right. right. Okay. Um, is that opening a, a wound to go into the angle parking? Probably. I think Probably. <laughs> you think it's Absolutely. opening a wound? It is a wound. It it's is an wound. eyesore. It's disgusting. It doesn't accomplish what it's meant to accomplish. People still back right out in the middle of the streets. Yeah. There's lives in danger. It's, you, it was, so the angled aspect is... The parallel parking works is fine. Yeah. So, you know, in the, in the kind of through the official lens of how the government dealt with that, how the city and the state, that was a compromised position that the city council endorsed, I think unanimously, I think it was approved unanimously at the city and it was, it was endorsed by the state as being, you know, this is a, this is a workable solution that, so I, I don't know that the city would be in a position of saying, you know, we hate this and we don't want to have it because our, our council, I think unanimously approved it uh, to be implemented. All times change. Now that it's in, and it's not functioning. I think it needs to be revisited. What on this? I mean, obviously, the situation we're in with the, the state owning roads here, we're, we're always going to be in a situation where we have to work collaboratively with them. But yet, we don't really seem to have a mechanism to do that. We, we, everything is done in a knee jerk reaction, you know, crisis oriented in, in 30 days or less kind of thing. And, and shouldn't, shouldn't we be establishing a mechanism where we can work collaboratively with them? That you know on all of these issues, not just the parking, on how we how we redo Palm Boulevard, how we redo intersections, really have a plan put forward for the next five years or whatever it is, rather than fighting every effort every time it comes up. And nowhere in this plan does it do that. We just keep listing items and saying we're going to have we're going to do something, we're going to do something, we're going to do something. Yeah. But we don't really say let's establish a working group of, 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 of assign some people 
have a collaborative effort where we can put together a true five-year plan with BOT and have them tell us why it won't work and have us tell us why this is what we want to do. That makes it more dynamic. Yeah, and none of that really comes through in this. We, we keep making lists, and every five years we make the same list saying, here's the things we need to address, parking and, tra and transportation and, and traffic. But yet we don't really have a mechanism to do anything. And I don't know what that is. Yeah. I mean, even on this, we, we've assigned things to committees on the, under the workshop structure that don't exist anymore. Public safety. Um, who's going to do well, this? Well, that's, that's the departments. Oh, the departments, okay. But I mean, how, how is that going to happen? And who's going to put up together a plan and do that? That's always been one of my frustrations. I look through all right. the plans every five years. Who's we keep doing listing it? the same thing. And five years later, we list them again. And five years later, or 50 years later, we list them again without having, maybe there need, we, we have subgroups to do that. Maybe council needs to say, we need a transportation subgroup to, to you know, let's get members, put them together and, and citizens, there's, there's bright engineers on this island say, let's have a working group to put together a plan. And, we and then meet and the, and with the OT. this a year ago <laughs> when we were revisiting this. Right. And I thought that we had put some language in. And I, like Steve, I don't see it in here where um, we were addressing the need to um, deal with our ingress and egress issues here in the community, for both for the residents and for the, the, the folks visiting, both from the mainland and, and from all the renters. So is it, so trying to get to what, is this a, a strategy or is this? Well, is it it's a, a comprehensive plan uh, to Steve's point, where are, you know, why are we just rehashing? Why aren't we kind of putting something more um, moving forward? Yeah. One of our goal, goal, or, yeah, it, maybe one of our goals should be to establish a working group, and and then they can start looking at strategies. But I mean, and everything from you know citizens to say this is not what we want. This is ugly. You know, we need to sit down with DOT. We need to have a, a a proactive approach, well thought out, as opposed to in thirty days, let's put in angle parking. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, uh, I don't know, goal 8-1, we start to do that, truly, on the page 59. Steve, you're saying, I mean, I think 8-1 is kind of a list, of a task list, but you're saying to actually create... What's the process or mechanism to do it? I, I agree, 8-1, I think, list. lists many of the object, many of things that, that need to be looked at. Mm -hmm. And I think you also, uh, I mean, you're, I think your first point and they're related is just to have a closer working relationship with the DOT. Establish, a, and quite frankly, I think that on a personal level, Desiree and Secretary Hall have now, through kind of what they went through, they do have a much closer relationship. Sounds like than, improving, but we can't or, fight that before. I don't, I don't know that. <clears throat> The secretary of the DOT ever had been here, had ever, I mean, they, they had at some point, but it is very much now kind of a, a monthly meeting with the secretary. So there is a relationship now. Took a lot of strain to get there and um, may, may not be the most cordial, but there is at least a tie now where I, I don't think there was really, we weren't on the radar at all, I right. think, a year ago. And, and maybe couldn't get couldn't saying, get anybody here. Now that we have that, yeah, we want to put right. a group together that can start interacting on a more frequent basis, rather than just assign it to the city staff who have a lot of their plate already. Right. Saying, let's look at what else we can do. So if we yeah. identify the problems, then we can come up with some solutions, and then present. But right, I, I think the Allen got steamrolled a couple of years ago with COVID, and. I'm not sure that the secretary had a real positive relationship with anyone on our island at that point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's to the detriment of our community that we have traffic that's so bad on Saturday afternoon, people can't get up and back to church. Uh, and you can't get on the connector, you can't get home from Mount Pleasant. It's, and it's dangerous. I mean, if there's a medical emergency, how do you evacuate someone with our current system, which I think is a real problem? Right. We don't have a 20 year old population here. Right. 
So uh, personally, I think some of these things are good, but if you identify the problems, then you know how you can get to the solutions or the plans of it. I'm not sure how it, it it works in in the city government structure of what I'm talking about. I mean, you know, we we you know, you've got city staff, you've got departments yeah. in there. We used to have committees that reported to to city council. And they've gone to a different slightly different format with workshops, but but some group rather than just assign it back to public safety or the city staff saying you come up with a plan. It, it it probably fit better into the into the committee structure, but I'm not sure we have that. Is that something we should be doing more of here? Saying the planning commission should develop a plan for traffic. Well, well I, I was in there wondering, questioning that too. Is the, that know, we're talking about a conference? Who else does it? Is that really us? I mean, I, that's my question. What's the what's the structure? so you know? Right now, we happen to have this exact situation where the city, the DOT, has hired um, a consultant. To develop a plan to develop solutions on the connector and it's right now it's very much focused on the configuration of the connector but that those meetings are really happening between um, the chairperson of public safety the city administrator the secretary uh, of the dot kind of her right hand person and um and the town of Mount Pleasant. So there is kind of currently a just a working group that just happens to be kind of the group that's working together on uh they're the kind of existing. focused on the connector issue though, right? Yeah, that's just the connector. To, yeah. So nobody and there is there is no other there's the connector study, there is the corridor study that's gonna happen with that same group. And that's it. I mean, there is no other plan but i'm just kind of i guess talking out loud of how that <laughs> process is evolving and how that's working um but it's it's the first time that's ever happened it's happened very kind of informally and and um, out of just reaction to what happened on the connector so it's kind of we're we're in a react we're in a reactionary stage to what happened and well in the bigger come out picture of, i think Steve's point and, and, and uh, what Jeff was mentioning. I mean, Palm Boulevard needs to be part of this conversation, right? And the residential communities and the you know the, the parking on you know, the heavy days that takes place on in the uh, non Palm Boulevard areas of the community. So would a all right. So now, kind of putting on as a as a. An example, I guess I'm also thinking through completely different conundrum, but drainage. The city through this group, through this group created uh, an RFP, solicited uh, input from potential uh, engineers that would look at the island from a, a drainage standpoint. That consultant is now working uh, on our behalf on a drainage master plan. Well, if they were here the other day. Right? They were. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were. They were out driving around and taking photos, which was good to see. And I think they're they are doing a great job. I think um, that effort is kind of being reported. It's being managed by the staff. I mean, the staff is inter interplaying with. Um, so maybe. Uh, I mean, would that be? How this happened that that this group so and 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 i guess to back up even beyond before that the first step of that was this group recommended to put into the next year's budget a chunk of money for that plan once the money was allocated then this group we worked on a on an rfp interviewed the responders came up with a recommendation and now that plan is working itself through and they're working on it so then there's going to be kind of a delivery of that plan that'll happen at, at various groups but is is that the well, model that we should the follow only for the only layer on that that's, that makes it a little more complicated is it the the drainage we control this this we we should have some interaction with dot as we start putting these plans together before we start spending a lot of money and putting plans so 
I would just layer, how do we get that? How do we get them to the table? Right. 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 So, and not necessarily the director. Right. No, yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's too top heavy. I yeah. Like that was probably why there was a knee jerk reaction. Right. We need to find the people <laughs> in the middle somewhere. So you don't want to grasp. So I started having this flashback. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh, it's, it's a bad start. Uh -oh. Which, no, when, when we were doing the beachfront management plan in 2010 time frame, it's, and I'm looking at Sandy when we said that, we went through that a very similar process to what we just did for the drainage mm -hmm. of soliciting <laughs> ideas, having meetings with the committee. We, and that's all led up to that 2015 plan was pretty much kind of the outcome right. of three or four years worth of efforts that went on. Yeah. Um, is it time to do- And Stan Tech generated a, a report. And mm -hmm. Is it time to do of... that again? Yeah, <laughs> that, I, well, I still I have my drawings there. of the old parking plan. Yeah, so, yeah, I still do too. <laughs> and again, it's like, you know, again, there's a been a huge turnover. So the, a lot of that stuff that went on is, you know, most of the council probably doesn't even yeah. know about it. Yeah, that um, plan still, I mean, it came up heavily in the but dialogue yeah. after um, and that we just had that led to the angle parking. I mean, that. So, yeah, to your point, we did it for beach parking in 2012, something like that. Something that led like to, that. The, to a 2015 plan that, that led to, to all the kind of got us to this point today. And again, it's like what we were some of the other things we've done. We've kind of said, you know, here's our best guess. Let's reevaluate. We never seem to go back and reevaluate, but uh, that's kind of that's what but that's where my mind was kind of going. Is this something that planning commission just needs to put on the plate for once so, we get through this? So do we put as a strategy budget for will that be fiscal year twenty four? Next the next fiscal year budget enough to do a comprehensive transportation. transportation plan how much is the how much has the traffic changed since 2015 or well but we were looking at so in 2015 we we're looking specifically at parking okay. arrangement i mean it was it was down and and part of it then was studying pay to park uh there was but it was it was not really traffic flow and you know getting egress in, in in and out it was more the traffic the beach traffic migrating into and parking in neighborhoods uh and it was you know should we pay to make people pay to park if so do we do it with kiosks do we do it with a with some kind of technology so it was a different problem being studied in 2015. Douglas went out to his benefit and counted every parking space from Breach Inlet to 57th Avenue and submitted a map and a report yeah. with all of the spaces available on 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 10th, you know, down to 57th Street. And, and we had a we had a very <laughs> a succinct yeah. number of spaces uh, that uh, were, were counted to make sure that we met the requirements of the beach management uh, act, act right uh, for beach access so that we would qualify for all sorts of uh, interesting funding and other grants and things so that's still i assume uh, very little has changed with mm -hmm. that yeah, with the exception of the palm boulevard which the angling changed right I think it's actually reduced the number in Palm it did. Boulevard yes. for vehicles. It did. Yes, I, I, mean, I remember the traffic jams in 2015, just like yesterday. Right. I mean, they're the same as we have now. And in the and summer on Saturdays and Sundays, you just don't leave your house. Right? Yeah. We could also refresh some studies that we had done of different ways to delineate Palm Boulevard. Mm -hmm. um, uh, David Stevens really always wanted, you know, that third lane because he lived in Wild Dunes and on Monday mornings would get caught by the trash trucks and, you know, you don't move. Um, but that's a real thing. And, and that middle lane could be used just like we've talked about with the connector of those, none of, none of our purview, but maybe a, a middle lane that's an emergency lane or a reverse lane or, you know, but we need to probably 
bring that stuff back up. It's, it's in the records. We just need to refresh, relook, and and do something a little bit more comprehensive. That's not just before it was flow or parking, and maybe we need to, you know, bring it all back together. Um, and and there was different attitudes, I think, um, back then, you know, as to you know if you. <laughs> When we thought we could restrict parking and just park the beachfront management plan, I, I did a very uh, a study that was, you know, very debilitating if you were from Mount Pleasant wanting to park. I mean, there there was a handful. We have the node of parking here. If you parked like six to twelve people near Breach Inlet, I give up my 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 avenue. I won't say which one that is because it could park 12, 18 cars. That's another. You know, so if we found one more place to park, perhaps in front of the Citadel Beach Club, we wouldn't have to park another car on Palm Boulevard. You know, but that wasn't popular. And, and that's maybe not a good idea either. But, you know, maybe the times have changed. We've also uh, you know, had an idea of maybe parking six cars per beach access point on the ocean side and doing it in a way that's pleasantly landscaped, so it's not as obtrusive as wheel stops. Um, and maybe it's a change in materials. Maybe instead of killing grass, uh, we put down some gravel pathway or something, rock ROC, something that might, you know, hold a wheel down without, you know. Tons rock out. Yeah. <laughs> and just, you know, maybe we just need to study that kind of stuff. Well, I, so, Ron is uh, referencing the beach management plan has these requirements of what, how many spaces constitute an open, an open beach, a public beach, and you have to be a public beach to be kind of able to be eligible for funding if your beach gets damaged. Um, there was kind of this idea in the city that that is a state standard. And so maybe that is telling us all that we have to account for if we if we get and it was something like six cars per eighth mile get you an eighth of a mile each way and we were kind of thinking of things through the lens of maybe that's all we have to provide to the public. I would say now, and I would say as a result of what's happened, that the state has completely, including changing the law has completely changed and clarified that we cannot just re shut down. reduce, well, okay. yeah, well, we I can't mean, shut down parking. There are two different rules from two different departments. You know, that's, yes, one yeah. was the beach but, people were saying right. this is as few as you had to have. The other was the highway people who are now saying you're not going right. to, you're not going to significantly reduce parking and get it approved through the DOT. So it's a little bit different. So uh, managing the inflow, the ingress and egress is truly what the challenge is, um, short of reducing some of the existing parking. Well, you know, they go out and work the, the traffic uh, signals, but that doesn't help. I mean, it puts them in danger sitting there flipping the switches every two minutes. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people who want to come to the beach and best plan is not well advertised. That's parking in Mount Pleasant and taking the bus over. Because I don't think anybody who comes to the beach wants to get stuck in the traffic. It takes an hour and a half out of your state. Um, so I think there's got to be other options. And I think this committee would be a good place to start with options. And then you can present it to city council with them or with them. Uh, my understanding is that the governor is willing to listen to this stuff, but not for the previous city council. So now we have a new one. And this was we're going to listen is what, what's happened here has kind of been a travesty. And I think this group has got enough history behind this that you can pull up some archives and go through what was done in the past and see how it applies currently. It'd be nice if you could click off how many cars are coming out of the intersection and say there's no more parking, go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. right. Well, that was so, that was kind of part of Stantec's, one of the things is a interactive 
real time information about there's only 12 spaces somewhere. <laughs> and, and I think they got it down to here are the 12 spaces. Um, that's that's 8.1.4. Yeah. That's great. And it's like a parking lot. I mean, why drive around a parking lot that's full? Right. So is it? So 8.1 through 8.4 were the top things that Stantec identified. Would new 8.1 be put enough money in the upcoming budget to implement to develop one through four? The comprehensive plan to include these items. That kind of gets to or your original point, right? right? Everybody agree to that? I mean, I think that's a something a new some wording like that. A new strategy that truly starts the ball rolling down the the ball of snow running rolling down the mountain. I think was your original excellent point of how do we not just have this sit on the right? Show? Otherwise, you said and, and get to just point. There's different. There's how we get to that. Whether that's that's an RFP to get an outside source. Whether we have enough data existing ready to compile it ourselves but i mean that that we can then take the next step what process do we want to use to get that plan put together um but i think it needs to be a document that says here's here's yes. the plan and, and i think we can't underestimate somewhere in this we have to put in the words we have to collaborate with SDOT. there's no sense us putting a plan together and trying to force it on them right we need to sit down and say you guys helped us put this plan together <laughs> You know, do whether, whether they assign one of their district engineers to the to a, a, a working group with us who, who can review the draft list, I think a collaborative effort is what's uh -huh. going to be needed. Otherwise, well, it's going to be dead on arrival. It helps city council and the mm -hmm. mayor. Absolutely. Right. The next level. So it, it so, just develop a plan and kind of with some words that says in collaboration with SCBT. Yeah. Develop, you know, because it is yeah. their roads. I mean, you know, we can write all the plans we want. They right. own them. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think. We I, think that's a, I, that. I would like our own local engineer. Because <laughs> yeah, we're going to lose. <laughs> well, I guess in, if we're Sorry. getting into that one, I was going to say, the, who, who approves the beachfront management? Because it kind of tied, since they tie together. The local beach management plan? Yeah. So that is, that's also happens to be something that's currently being worked on. It's an update, much like this. Um, and it's, the new draft is pretty far along, uh, probably pretty close to being. Well, no, well, what I was referring to, if we're looking at, at DOT, because any traffic change would, or parking change would need their approval, it would also be tied in with the beachfront management. So any oh, change okay. would need whoever that approves that plan to say, oh. I would approve a plan that contains that, right. if that's what we're proposing. So uh, I think that was my my point. I wasn't sure who does. So that. council so approves that plan. It then goes to OCRM to so, approve. Yeah. So so your so is how do we get OCRM and DOT and with a working group from the island to come up with traffic or parking? I don't think. I mean, OCRM is. I just don't think that the DOT is going to let the city reduce the available parking down to a point that it's of any concern to OCRM. I mean, they're they're so they require so few. We're never going to get close to that threshold. I don't okay. think. But but it definitely should be coordinated. Yeah, there, there is yeah. a relationship there. There's no doubt. But if if you look at if we say let's look at Palm Boulevard between 21st and 41st from a transportation point of view, obviously it's going to have an impact on parking also. So the right. two of them do have to be related. Right. Whereas if you say you know we want to look at the intersection of of Palm and the connector. That really has little parking implications. It's a traffic yeah. problem. So I mean, the problems are a little different. But SCOD DOT would need to be involved in all of those. Right. So we don't. It's an ongoing problem. We don't really say that in any of what we have rewritten, and yet we're trying to address it. Um, I think if what you, is if you put, problem? if you request money. Traffic. For the 2020. Ingress and egress. 
holds many of us uh, hostage <laughs> as residents. Uh, I think, you know, it occurred to me the other night if, if we were to we were to storm the Capitol. <laughs> Didn't you just say, Douglas, that eight the new eight point one would be to request money for the twenty twenty four budget? To to for, create for a plan a to new, work with DOT to create a plan for the new comprehensive to address plan. these yes to address the strategies below. Well, then, the, but I think my question point. is why. Why are we not putting in there why we want the money? Yeah, we should. We're so hostages. We want money to study and figure out, solve. I don't want to study. I want to solve want, want list. the traffic problem. Okay. But you're giving him the why. And the why is because we have yeah, and issues. That, and so in a comprehensive plan, I'm thinking that how do, you know, we're looking at numbers here that I would challenge have continued to increase and will continue to increase as Mount Pleasant and Charleston County expands and puts in new subdivisions um, and traffic. Um, I mean, there's a new one on so the rifle range across from that park, uh, the Mount Pleasant proposed park, uh, 500 homes. There's there's another 2,000 cars. And guess how they're selling every one of those houses? Well, here is three miles to the beach. <laughs> Maybe two hour drive, but it's <laughs> <laughs> so, take. So Sandy, is your I mean, and I think it's if I'm hearing that correctly, we have strategies and goals to improve traffic flow and reduce congestion. That's a goal and it has a list of strategies. But are you saying that the body of the element itself should kind of hit the reader over the head with we have a nightmare of congestion? Some in the summer, in which the it doesn't summer. really yes. currently do. Right. It doesn't I, do that right now. I right. think it needs to be, yes. If there's a problem we have, and we have to try to figure out the ways to solve it. In addition, I think the police department and the fire department need to be brought into this as consultants, because they deal with this on a daily basis. And in the past, when the connector problem began, no one was called from the police department, nor the fire department, nor Sullivan's Island. They're a lot more interactive now yeah. and very aware they, they're they're you know coordinating with the sheriff of the county in Mount Pleasant. The, the chief gave a report last night. It was pretty pretty good. Um, not the chief. Um, Swain, uh, Officer Swain spoke. But um, all right. So I'm trying to keep up here. We're going to add a paragraph in the body that says traffic out here is a nightmare. In the summer, traffic and safety. Traff and it causes it causes safety concerns. And then are you? And what's the <laughs> hostage? He wants the word oh, hostage. That, that would get everybody worked up. <laughs> causes. Safety. I think I used abysmal but failure it, once and I got poo pooed. But it is. It may be a dramatic word, but when you feel like you can't leave your house on Saturday and Sunday, that you're a hostage. Okay. We can solve it. Hostage. I'll put that in quotes. Yeah. There we go. Um, Jeff, was your point that we should have uh, the police chief at a at like the next meeting to just run through the well, issues? Police with him? chief and fire chief bounce some things off of them because they're, they're are we affected more than we are. Do you think we're at that point? We're ready to do that next well, month? Well, if they don't think there's a problem then maybe it's just my imagination that I can't leave my house on the weekend. It would be, it, I would, mean, I, <laughs> it would be good. I'm sorry to interrupt. Are we, do we all agree that that would be good to have the next them month? present what they have done? I don't know that everybody knows what they have done. Um, and there has been a lot of coordination that, yeah. that is, um, in my purview, it, it's helping a lot. Yeah, the presentation so last, last night was, you know, was, was good to hear. And when they talked about the traffic, even for the Fourth of July, how Mount Pleasant stepped up, and you know, so I, there, I think there are some improvements that have occurred, and, and we should hear about the coordination. I I feel like I've heard, at least from the police chief, that the reconfiguration has not hasn't caused safety problems on the connector. I don't know if that's, but but I, I guess you all are, are not talking about just lane configurations. You're just talking about in general, 
what happens to the safety of the island when it's Katie bar the door and you can't get well, from one end to the other. I mean, I, you know, I was on a connector Friday and an ambulance was coming down, couldn't go anywhere because people didn't know where to go right and go in the bicycle lane or go left and cross the double yellow line. So we were sitting there watching this ambulance, everything's lights are going off and, and everything sirens are sounding and no one knew what to do. Mm -hmm. And that's not the first time we've seen that. I mean, it happens all the time. So, so, so kind of an assessment of and the same thing conditions. happens on Palm yeah. Boulevard on the weekends. I mean, if the fire if the fire truck goes by, they, they can't get through. No one can get through because there's nowhere to pull. Everybody agree with, with having them here next month? An assessment kind of give their professional assessment of the current state of affairs with our traffic flow and congestion. I think the more input, the better. So oh, what, there? Okay. what else do we have for next month? Is this the end? Well, once we get to transportation, are we? Um, we might have one more. I think we have, I think we have one more. We're, we're nearing the end. So, so I guess, yeah, my question is, I mean, we, we kind of beat around that we we think we should have we we should dive deeper into traffic and parking. Um, do we need to do that to get something in the comprehensive plan for this round, or is and, and then I, as I kind of went through that, I was thinking we hit that. So we had the strategy A one A, which was in the old plan, which probably really never got. Um, so it's develop a management plan to lessen the effects of beach traffic as on the island roadways. What does that mean? <laughs> well, it's kind of what we're saying, but we never did it since it was written in yeah, the plan true. last time. So well, then it's kind of replaced by the new eight one, which is develop a comprehensive plan. So right, eight yeah. one eight really doesn't need to exist anymore. Sure. Well, I thought eight one was a little bit different. That was yeah, I don't see the two is the same. No, the eight one one. I had no, a question. Not just eight one one. His new he, he created a new eight one. Yeah. So, so eight one oh, eight one plan, not this one. Four oh. kind of does take eight one a. Develop a plan yeah. to lessen the effects beach traffic has on the uh, island roadways. Eight, but four is evaluate providing real time beach parking space availability data to the public to improve efficiency for ingress and egress for beach visitors. I, just, I actually had a, I I had a question mark by eight one new eight, and that has a, a year of 2009. I think to me, I believe that that was what the beach plan did in 2015. I was gonna, I think that that's what that whole effort was started by 814, and the beach plan, beach parking plan, was the result of yes. that bullet. Right. So I was, I was thinking that that would come out. Um, well, that was the question: Is it that, or do we, are we start that whole process kind of again? <laughs> and 81, 811, new 811 replaces that 814, and that one comes out. I, I think is what it could. A new new eight one one, not the yes. one that's on, not the one right on our piece. Yeah, of we enter, we insert a new eight one one. Yeah, okay. So that one we come that one comes I, out right. We're good. I, I agree. Because you know I think in the past we came to the conclusion that not all of our traffic problems are based solely on parking. Oh, yeah. you know, it's, I mean, we've got hundreds of for thousands of car trips going into wild dunes for work, play, golf, restaurant. You know, so it's. And they have places to park. I mean, we got twenty five thousand cars coming on and off the island. We only have what two thousand parking places. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so where are they going? <laughs> so, so yeah, but, you know, it could be where's us. the other twenty two thousand cars going? Right. Um, but you have four o'clock on Saturdays. Check in right at Wild Dunes, where it goes and backs all the way out yeah. to Forty First Street. Well, at least they moved it down to the end now. Yeah, you yeah. don't come in the first gate. Well, no, it's for check in. Yeah. Uh, well, for yeah. general check. I mean. Yeah, it used to stop at that first game. Right. Yeah. All now they go all the way down. Traffic is supposed to go down, except local traffic. 
Yeah. Plus, I think someone needs to tell us if if we have a counter and there's no more spaces available, where are those cars going to go? They're down the highway. That's exactly <laughs> first that's and exactly line. right. That's the number what they to do. pop up on the counter. Yeah. I'll just... the grocery store parking lot. Wait to see those red light, your brake lights kick in. <laughs> yeah, those free to pop. I feel good that that's rolling it forward a bit. I like get a plan, get uh, add a few more, add a paragraph about being held hostage. The need. Mm -hmm. There's a need. The need. Oh, the need. The need. Against, against your will. We're going to add <laughs> a strategy. Uh, Not even able to pay ransom to get out. <laughs> Sandy, we can take all those concrete bumpers and make a new place for fish to accumulate. That'll be your new road home. I I am curious. I I kind of had the impression, and I am not terribly close to it. But I thought that I have heard positive things about the Angle Park. That it did kind of, for lack of a better word, help things. It, it clarified where you park, how you park, and it it made it more effective. I don't know. I. Is I've that, never heard anything positive about it. it, it, it is does, it appearance? It gives well, you appearance, appearance. There's no yeah. grass. It's supposed to be the grass is supposed to be mowed by the state. Yeah, that never happens. There's trash all over those things. People dump their trash bags when they walk out. The people who live there don't like it, and and it's literally. I mean, the, the parallel parking. It's easier to see where the spot spot is. Right. So people aren't making the U turn trying to get in between two big trucks. It's a mess. You can see your vision is better. It, parallel parking like if you're on the angle trying parking, to get out getting out you have a blind spot um be an interesting question for the chief i i just had it in my mind that it was now aesthetics aside i don't think i've heard anybody say yeah. it looks good but <laughs> i'm i believe that i've heard that it's more effective at getting people to park correctly yeah the biggest I mean, problem with it is organized. you're caught you're coming from mount pleasant yeah or wherever mm -hmm. you're going towards wild dunes and you're turning around to go into a diagonal space now mm -hmm. leaving it's i think that the chief likes it because you're pulling back and you're in your lane right mm -hmm. but isn't that that's better than parallel park actually you parallel, have, you have, better vision. Don't have to go but you don't have to go to his point a full 180 you're going right just yeah you can actually yeah. pull into the spot where parallel you, you got to turn go down the street circle the block come back and then block traffic as you back into a space oh. I don't know. We could. but it worked for a long time yeah it worked perfectly well for 100 days mm -hmm. yeah right that was a problem right you couldn't take a people you couldn't get right. there right. so that stopped that if anything jeff i thought we we're going to do it on the other side i'm i'm messing with you <laughs> I, I just I got a trailer hitch in my car. You're going to see me driving the concrete things right down the road. <laughs> they're not even concrete. Yeah, they're plastic. They're plastic. Yeah. They're plastic. Yeah. They're plastic. They're plastic. Yeah. Plastic. They're plastic. yeah. Why you look like ATV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, it's, it's, it's a spike. They got spikes in them. You can yeah. pull those out easy. Yeah. It's sand. If they, I mean, if they worked in a, aesthetics, I mean, it does seem as though the aesthetics could be cleaned up. Some this is another reason for a well thought out long term comprehensive right. plan mm -hmm. rather than the yeah. knee jerk reaction. Because, yeah. yeah, I guarantee there's SED engineers saying, let's put it on the other side. We own that right away, too. Yeah. Well, that's so DOT can put a multi level garage down there exactly. also. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think that's why let's try to get proactive and have a plan for traffic yeah. and parking along the problem. Yeah, the garage of 13th Avenue access. <laughs> 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 They're not. <laughs> no, they're watching. They'll be back. They'll be back. <laughs> oh, they're <laughs> <It's fine>. <laughs> <laughs> Their wives will be back soon. All right. So we'll have more added, more information provided, and then take another pass at this next month if that if that works for everybody. Yep. Some good news. If we beat the hostage up. Uh...
<laughs> put hostage in there. Uh, next thing is update on short-term rental recommendations. As you all well know, um, those recommendations have left the Planning Commission. They are now with City Council. Um, City Council last night, for those that weren't able to watch, had um, an economics professor from the College of Charleston talk very generically about what trends he's seeing kind of across the nation. Um, Brumby, Brumby McLeod is his name, and, and Brumby has worked closely with the city uh, for many years. Um, he's kind of always been interested in having our data. He uses, he's used our data to, to kind of show trends and, and watch trends for 10, 15 years. So we've, all, we've had a long, good working relationship with the College of Charleston, with Brumby in particular. So I thought it was interesting. I mean, it was just a sidebar. A lot of the companies um, work with the software programs. They're all different, but uh, we have to all developed a feed through so that he can gather um, our data. And I believe it's, um, I think it's Beachside, Island Realty, and Wild Dunes. I'm not sure if Bacasa is feeding through their information. So it's fairly, it's a pretty comprehensive capture of the, the vacation rental. Um, is that, that's managers. key data? Is that key data? Key data is the software that ultimately company, captures it all. But yeah, yeah. And they work all over the country and do this. So I think not, we've always talked about if key, and, and Scott talked a lot about occupancy levels and I know we've talked about whether, and this is a little bit of a sidebar, but if if the city should be using key data to see occupancy percentage rates, is that that is something that that group could give us, correct? I believe so. I'm kind not sure who participates, weekend. but yes, and the, like the DOT's traffic count, there's a little extrapolation. Well, it's just it is what they get. Here's the number of units and it is this occupancy. And they know through their units and through the companies that participate, they know that collectively they're 75% booked this weekend. Mm -hmm. Correct. So well, that's, that's an interesting, because we do have, speaking of the budget, we do have um, some additional money in the budget. We, we currently use, or we are, we currently use a, a a uh, service that captures kind of a web crawling thing that captures rentals that are happening and identifies when a rental is going on without a license, but it doesn't do what you're talking about. And we have, we do have money. Um, so the company you have is actually very limited in what it can look at too. I mean, I don't think they're pulling from our website, no. for instance. Um, unless unless you have it listed on multiple, unless it, they're they're pulling from Airbnb, VRBO, you know, so it have to be that have to be kind of cross advertised. Yeah. Yes, they have to. Yeah, exactly, because a lot of companies use both Airbnb and VRBO as well as their own website. So they could be listed out there three or three, four, four times. different times. Yeah. And it's very difficult because they're not all generic. It's not all one, two, three, umpty, ump street on right. everybody's website for how their rules are too. Right. It's very, uh, very complicated. So um, the the issue is now with city council. I, I have heard um, and I, I don't know if they are of a mindset to take it up at their next council meeting, which would be two weeks from yesterday. That would kind of be the natural progression, but I haven't heard um, if it'll be on the agenda for their consideration at that meeting. I kind of think it will be, but it, but it may not. I mean, there, as you all know, I mean, it it kind of took this group a year of looking at it and kind of grinding through it to come to a place of um, being ready to 
have a recommendation. So I don't know if they'll, if they'll take their time and um, sort through it, or if they will, if they'll just kind of charge forward. I will say that we are, um, we are seeing a significant uptick in the licenses that we're issuing. Um, and it seems like every news, you know, every, every time it's on the news, we get 15 more uh, each time. So, you know, now it's kind of been on the, been in the news 10 different occasions. So that's something like a hundred. I think we, I think we've increased uh, the number of licenses by over a hundred since uh, you all pushed it on like a month ago. So it's. I get the question I have would have is, is it specific specific to any of the three proposed capped areas or is it a mix and blend of uncapped and capped so a lot of it in area two okay you know it's to be expected and yeah it's it is not a lot of those that are rushing in are in uncapped areas but most of the people i've talked to or approached me don't have a clue they just got one for the sake of getting one. yeah they don't, they don't understand the zones mm -hmm. or what right the, the numbers that we looked at and, and the year that took us to get to it so most ones that, that have come to me have just just did it yeah <laughs> i think there's a lot of that people yeah. just doing it to think uh, thinking they're being safe is it well no fear of absolutely it's it's real. Real. yeah I mean, it's, uh, it's a real yeah. thing um i've heard uh i've heard kind of the sentiment that the zones aren't useful. I mean, that's one kind of uh, tack that I've heard. Heard another sentiment that it's it's unnecessary to do it. Um, so, kind of hearing different. I don't know. I don't know what the will of council will be, but um, there seems to you know, kind of like any group of ten. You ask ten, you're going to get ten different opinions about the best approach. But um, clearly, I you know, to me, I think it's. It is being received as a well thought out. I mean, it clearly was thoroughly thought through, and there's logic behind it. And um, so, I think it's at a minimum appreciated. So we'll see where it goes. I I do, and you will probably know that Folly Beach has decided not to implement a cap. That was, ironically, that's kind of the. It was a reaction to their initial talk about a cap that got us talking about a cap they've since decided they initially talked about a moratorium decided not to do that and then a cap and they've i think decided not to do that so, um but didn't it but, get so out of control that they just kind of threw their hands up i was and nicole told me this first and i i had you said a higher number last night. yeah that it's <laughs> great on channel four i mean they're right. They're 41% rentals. Can he say 50% rentals? Yeah, over 50% like, rentals. I, and I think at that point, there's nothing you can do to cut back. So that's why I think they threw their hands up. I don't, I don't think they I decided to. It's a very to... hostile conversation, mm -hmm. from what I understand. But I don't know what the, I mean, it was a five to two. It wasn't like a three to four fence. Right. So I don't know what it was that made people vote against it. I don't know what was buried inside of that, that maybe they were voting against mm -hmm. one thing as opposed to. Right. I, I don't know. Either. Yeah. I don't know. I've read their minutes. <clears throat> Any uh, thoughts, comments, questions about? Do we have a full time rental person that manages licensing? Yeah, got two of several. <laughs> two, if not four. <laughs> are you Are you speaking of yourself and me, and Matt? <laughs> but you guys wear many hats. We do. <laughs> That's why I said, isn't there like just one full time? designated person no, who there's nothing but manage the licenses and look at so i i would say that Jeannie and nikki mm -hmm. they are 90 percent of their day dealing with rentals you know because um well, maybe not 90 maybe 70 percent maybe 70 percent of two people um and they are they are the kind of keeping the documentation straight, keeping it in the computer, keeping ownership straight, keeping uh, when they change uh, when they change ownership, that's a new license. So yeah, there's 
there's and, and then there's a software program that's software program there. that's watched and then the police i mean we have there's livability uh currently two they've just hired a, another um part-time so there's a livability branch there used to be a livability court that was solely dedicated to it but the 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 number of cases actually going to the court got so low that the court uh morphed into just a regular court so it looks like you with all due respect that everything is kind of you know with short-term rentals it's kind of a whole host of people that are managing it yes as different part aspects of their day, yeah, right. as part of their daily job i didn't know if it would be more effective to have one person just on it and a nice software package that is on it currently it's 24 7 and not nine to five i didn't mean nine to five i mean you're going to have aspects that that will defer after five you've got the police and the fire but you know i'm just looking at maybe there's a better way to free up some of their time so they can get actual things done and have somebody on it full time you know the work is very um it is it is very overwhelming during renewal times mm -hmm. i mean there's 1500 different interactions on a on a license um i'm sorry there's 1500 licenses mm -hmm. being interacted like three four five different times so it's it's tens of thousands of different interactions right but that's really kind of a three-month process mm -hmm. getting the renewals out getting them back in getting the accounting done then it goes to very much a monitoring situation and that is done by software and and just managers that are dealing with well this one came out this one's going in this one sold and then the the software you know kind of alerting that a new one's come up for rent so it, it it's very much a feast or famine mm -hmm. um so i don't know that so one person would be too little right. for three months mm -hmm. and then it would be too much for the other right. nine months okay i understand there's also a dispatcher that's assisting with a lot of the different uh calls that come in yeah yeah i don't know you've got, that you've got a varied staff that are all working together here on the Isle of Palms. and i don't think any i mean i think all of the um our kind of arrangement is modeled directly after the city of charles uh, livability court department um and that's the that's the way we set it up 15 years ago was to be pretty much a direct copy of the city of charleston changed a little bit but i don't know any i don't think anybody's just doing it with one person i mean it's a there's a police element to it right that has livability officers dealing with it there's kind of a a large part of it is clerical you know administrative work you then have the kind of contentious things that happen that kind of elevates itself to a right. that's i was really more person. the clerical focus because we have yeah, so I would, many rentals yeah i would say that there really are two very much full-time people dealing with it plus the software um and there's uh, there were multiple different softwares but you know there's an accounting aspect of it that's one system so there's several different suites of software that are in play but i from my perspective the current um the current law of the land wouldn't justify additional staffing i think that there's been a concern because right now if somebody's not renting a house it is a call to that person and you know it depends on if they've been renting it they didn't renew or if it's new rental and they didn't know or what this but it's it's basically a call of you need to get an accommodations account number and you need to pay us a few hundred bucks mm -hmm. and it's a very easy uh thing to gain compliance with if we change to a situation where we're over a cap mm -hmm. and you cannot rent a license you, we can't give you a license you just have to stop altogether that's gonna that's a much more challenging right. enforcement situation than what we currently have it's like i said it's just 
give us a check. We're that gonna get your correct. paperwork in order. And that's done typically by that afternoon. I mean, that's an instant um, compliance is gained instantly and then they're left to continue renting. But if we're in a situation where there's a lot of demand to rent and we are telling people you cannot rent, we cannot give you a license, that's a very yeah. different situation. So that could, that very well could warrant some additional enforcement resources if we're if we're kind of covered up with rogue underground black market rental situation that could take a lot more time than just a phone call if you, you owe us a few hundred bucks sure. so we'll see that's got I, that does kind of have everybody's attention that potential problem But it'll all, you know, how many, how many cap are, are the caps going to be implemented? Are instantly we going to be up against the cap? Is there going to be four or five, six properties trying to rent and unable to get a license? Or is it going to be a hundred properties? You know, all of that would, would tell us what the reaction should be. So just a real, real quick, um, I don't remember the exact numbers, but area one, two, and three is where we have proposed caps. Area one, am I calling it right? Area one? Yeah. Oh, zone one, reach in, like kind of in. Zone one, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, had approximately 70. Right, this one, this one I have to look at my 71. Yeah. yeah. Give or take okay. one, okay. And there was very little. There was very little growth or it was flat line as I remember. However, there was turnover. A lot of turnover. 40 to 71 and like only 40 were consistent, something like that. So, I, and I'm saying this more just as a public interest uh, to those that might be listening. In these zones, we saw turnover within those. And so we saw units go off the market not all of them stayed with the new owners that bought. And that's how people will move up the list as a list becomes necessary for the cap. So if 71 plus our 10%, eight, call it 80. I don't remember what the exact number right. in zone one is an example. Um, and there's, X number of units that go off and become second homes or primary residences, then uh, that's going to open up some license possibilities. Because I've been hearing from a lot of people, oh, that's all going to be winners and losers, and nobody's going to ever get a license. Well, I don't, I, I don't think that's exactly correct in the current market that we've been dealing with due to the pricing of the real estate. And when I'm using the word market, that's that's been um, dictated by the price points that have, have, have occurred. And I think that's where we're seeing and why we've seen the migration back to zone two primarily because it's very affordable from an um, investment or a future retirement situation. And we do, we have a lot of people that have moved into these properties and they're buying them, renting them until they can retire, getting a, a foothold into the market in anticipation of it's gonna go up, it's not gonna go down. So um, that's where we're, we're seeing the market trend push back into that zone too, primarily. And there have been arguments for why you messing with caps in zone one and why you even fooling with zone three down in wild dunes, let them deal with it. That's just some input I've, I've had out there. Any, so, so this idea of winners versus losers, I guess the data is showing us there's kind of mass migrate, my well, mass, there is migration to area two. In my Thought, if there was an island-wide cap and it could just migrate freely, isn't that kind of putting all the pressure on island? I mean, aren't you kind of leaving area two open to free migration because they're naturally leaving the other parts of the island? So in my mind, I've heard the term 
or the phrase picking winners and losers. And I think that it's being used to kind of work against the idea of zones. But I'm thinking the zone is exactly the opposite and that it is actually, it's actually keeping zone two from being overwhelmed or taken a, or, or having a significant inflow of rentals because there's going to be room on, under the cap because they're leaving the uncapped areas and a lot Correct. of this. But if our goal is to keep a, a, a certain percentage on the island, and, and let's again, let's not use the third or third or third because if we eliminate the uncapped area, basically the, the back part of the island is more like 15 or 20 percent rental licenses. So you said, okay, the back part of the island, we're going to put a 20 percent cap across the those. All so the, the market. When you say back part, you're saying all one, two, and three collectively. I'm just, yeah. I'm just proposing. I'm not yeah. saying. I'm just fewer licenses right. than in the right. You, from whatever the it would be 500 licenses across all, all one, two, three. I think there is an argument to say, well, then let the market determine where those are in those three zones. But the total number is not going to go up. So that that's what well, I'm, I'm not talking about picking winners and losers. But we are also, if you, I'm not trying to force behavior, saying, okay, well. It, it, if, if we say there's a cap of 500 in those three zones, whether it's in one, two, or three, for the overall island, it doesn't necessarily matter. Let the market determine where those 500 are. So if you happen to live in zone two, where they're there may be, currently there may be migrated. Less, but, they, but they have to come from somewhere else, in which case there's a, there's a benefit to the other part of the island because the license left there and went over to here. It, it's in what are we trying, if we're just trying to say we want to keep a number of licenses at an at a acceptable level across the island, why should we determine what zone they have to go into? We're more looking at the gross number. So my, I thought that we were trying to address livability issues associated with a rental coming into your neighborhood that historically hasn't had a rental. But, but the percentage of livability is, is between one and three isn't that different either. I mean, if you live on a street in zone one or zone three and you've got 20% a, a of your neighbors, it's the same as if you're in zone two. So it's, you know, the, the people in, in one and three have the same livability issues. It's easy to write them off and say, well, yeah, but they're used to it. No, they may not be. They're single family residents just like everybody else. But if we're seeing the laws of economics are pushing them out of those neighborhoods, I would say they they don't have a problem. The market, I don't, the market will determine that. They don't, they don't benefit really from a cap because it's naturally going down. So to me, I guess I'm, I, I just see that as I'm just putting the pressure that on that's, zone two. That's the debate. So why would we put an extra level of protection on zone two that the people in one and three don't have? Because they are single family residents, primary residents, just like everybody else. But you're you are putting it there. You're capping it, but it's it's not ever going to do anything because the the numbers are naturally declining anyway. So well, you put the cap in place. But 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 if you put the cap at 10% more of, than what's in zone now two, you're putting a different cap in that area, a different density cap in zone two than you are in one and three. Because it's starting at a lower number. Right. That's all I'm saying. Mm. So just say 10%. So is it working or is it not working? It's working. It's working. Yeah. I would concur. Let the market determine where the licenses go. So I, I don't think I've heard that, that zone two, because it's so well, low. Dr. McLeod pointed out once real quickly, what's, are, you, are you looking at different densities in the zone? Yeah. And the answer is yes. Yeah, zone two does has historically had a lower density, right. and we're only allowing it to go that low density right. plus 10%. That's, that's the debate. Yeah, I heard him mention that. Right, and I, exactly right. But I don't. That's an, I mean, that is an when someone talked about, you know, are you setting yourself up for controversy? Well, if you start setting different densities in different zones, you're opening another can of worms, so to speak. I don't think we were setting really significant density differences. And in if only 10% are in zone two and 17% are in zone three and 20% are in zone two, you're set different densities. And that, that's another variable. And that's, we may want to, they council may want to do that, but, but you've now, you've gone to another, you've gone granular one level saying we're going to have different densities in each of those three zones. You know, your, the research you all did on this is, is better than most of the NIH, NIH grants I review every year. <laughs> and it was you painful. have your conclusion and it's <laughs> fine. It, it's, don't don't yeah. kill yourself over it. Yeah. Someone else worry about it. Yeah. Done. Yeah. 
It was good. It was well researched. Yeah. So that that was his point about you know you, you can just say different densities in its own. So that's a different variable. If A is ten, B is five, C is fifteen, set it at ten. That's that's an argument across the board, right? Which it's we kind did of what, not do, which and, we did and not, not and remove the zones. So there's, but I don't know that I, we, I <laughs> felt very strongly that zone two um, deserved the attention that we gave it and the cap yeah. that we gave it. And looking at zone one, where there'd been very little change, um, I felt maybe we should not cap it, just leave it alone too, because it's not changing. However, if we did change two, I suspect one might change. change. That was, that was, that would <laughs> and be if we didn't change, if we right. didn't cap three, uh, which I was quasi on the fence, well, let's leave three alone too, we, I believe, would have pushed that element into three by capping only two. So I, I felt confident and comfortable doing all three zones the way we did it i was going to say that was kind of my feelings it, it's the migrations we're seeing is not between zone one two and three it's between the uncapped area and those two zones areas. so if we at this, cap zone two at this time you're not seeing that migration because you haven't set up a, a variable that would would benefit that no we have over the past <laughs> years we're, we're seeing a migration off of the numbers haven't changed, but those areas are increasing. Where are they coming from? They've got to be coming from the uncapped areas. I, going I think down. they're also coming from three. It's well, some were three. three and and, and two but eights. going back to what Sandy was saying is, if we cap two, well, Sandy then the, those, that migration is still going to happen. It's just going to go to one and three now. Well, exactly. So when so, two reaches cap, then they're going to start going to three. Right. So, when so we had to kind of set them where they are if we didn't want things to <laughs> That was my point change. about unintended consequences. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And let council yeah. wrestle with all those things because that's that's the issue. Yeah. Right now we don't see that migration because there's no more, there's no driving force. But as soon as you reach a cap here, where are they going to go? They're going to go to three one, or they go to the uncapped zone. There's still a thousand houses available for licenses in the uncapped zone. There's just a hundred thousand that are for sale. Yes. <laughs> so and, the, and there there are yeah, unintended consequences. Yeah. Too many too many millions to yeah, just you're shopping in zone one two or three. Uh, the uncapped zone is probably not affordable. We didn't cap some. I mean, in general, I'm not talking about ocean front. On, on yeah, I, ocean, know, I, I agree. Just, I don't believe your 1,000 homes are available out there. And to Jeff's point, they're not for sale. I don't think we're we're creating a situation where those are those are coming out. And it, under again, the it's current the, structure, the price points. <laughs> it's the price points. And as I said, going back to your the whole transition of that licenses will be available. I kind of, you know, when we started thought that, but then hearing what you're saying is, we're now gonna probably exceed the caps in all the areas of people getting licenses that aren't using them. And will they be giving them up? Because, you know, right. I, I think that that's gonna create a temporary problem, probably. In, in a year when they have to prove <laughs> that they've marketed and in, or right. income and have their, all of their ducks in a row, there'll be some, open licenses yeah i mean i wonder I'll, it'll be interesting to see and because i don't know if those people getting them are they going to go through the headaches of actually renting them marketing them and kind of gaining three thousand dollars of rental income i i'm guessing that some probably will you know and we'll, we'll get some renewals that are going to all be three thousand three thousand <laughs> And, but they're going to have documented proof, just like and they're going to pay they their do tax, for their... and they're going to pay their taxes, and, yep. and they're going to say it's worth it. I, I get to keep my license for doing that. Some people may say that's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, I, and I, on that application form, I've often thought that um, the management companies, for the most part, manage the accommodations tax payments um i know we do and, and some of the bigger companies do i don't know about everybody um 
we don't ask for their account numbers on the applications to verify them with the state that they have an accommodations tax we, account, do we? We do. The unless city they're, does. Ex, yes. Unless do, they're managed. Unless they're exclusively managed by somebody who has an account. Okay. If they're owner managed, we get their account number. That's one of the things they okay. indicate to us. Okay. I briefly looked through that application and, and pay attention at that level. So if so. they're owner managed, you look for the tax number. Correct. And you're saying that you guys don't owe it all. Do you or do you not? How did you say that? Did you don't? We pay your tax for right. you. Okay. Because <laughs> I was going to say, I wasn't what you just said. They're right. yeah. If you're exclusively through a company, that company has an account. Okay. That they're, yeah. If your owner okay. managed, you need to have your own right. accommodations okay. tax number. Okay, we got off track there. But yeah, that's really, all. We didn't resolve anything, but no. we had a good. Discussion. It'll be. So it'll what, be a what was your update, Douglas? <laughs> that was my update. <laughs> okay, okay, it's getting it's getting worked through, and <laughs> we'll keep you posted on what progress it makes. I I think you all did a fine job. Uh, last thing, miscellaneous business for me is, and I think, did we talk about the code of conduct last month? Was it in your packet? Yes. We touch base on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we briefly went through and said it's there. It's there. And there is a there is a final page at the end of it that requests a signature. I believe it's all voluntary. You don't get kicked off the planning commission if you don't <laughs> sign it. But if you're willing to sign it and give it to us, I will put it in the planning commission file. But you will certainly. Yeah. Always conduct yourself in, in in a proper proper way. I was wondering yeah. if before anyone signed, if there should be a legal brief on this, much like we had with the um, um, the prior. Do you want to? Brief. I mean, we can. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm, you know, I don't know. A lot of the implications here in terms of um, a lot of this seems actually weighted towards members of committees and not not council members <laughs> <laughs> as I read through it. Uh -huh. And I don't have a problem signing it. Um, how about we put it on the agenda for our next legal briefing. I mean, we, we generally do that first meeting of the year. That's five months away. Just, I don't think there's any, I mean, we've never had it. It's completely kind of new and um, I don't think there's any co conduct issues. So why don't we just ask that the city attorney when he, when he's next here, talk to you all about it. I think that would be appropriate. All right. Somebody's going to have to remind me that. <laughs> <Being the next, laughs> I just have to remember when I set the legal briefing to tell them to do that. Which will be when? January. Okay. Unless you want to do do you want to do it now? I don't think I don't, I don't know what the urgency is but i, I don't also don't know what the implications are of... there's no it's be on your best behavior please yes. what you all always do i don't think there's any concerns that there's any implications is there a reason something that prompted this i think there's Who's... Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Some... some prior council members okay yeah I can... yeah because this reproach thing, you know, beyond reproach. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, most of this stuff actually just reads like all oh, those codes of ethics. That, yeah. You know, we used to have to read and, and get continuing it. I should have said that. Word. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yes. 
Yeah, it's kind of floated around as yeah. as an idea. City of Charleston needed it too, I think. All right, I don't have anything else. All right, motion to adjourn. Motion and a second. And motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. aye. I didn't get to discuss. Uh, there's no discussion, and there's no denying. <laughs> no discussing. There's no denying.